Hi everyone, my name is Mark and in this presentation I'll be sharing the dev team's approach to accessible design on Rocksmith Plus. So I've been working at Ubisoft San Francisco for a while now, first as a writer and then crossing over into design. In 2018, I attended the Games Accessibility Conference, which was an amazing experience uh, because it helped me realize that designing for accessibility is just like designing for anything else. It comes down to problem solving. And so now I oversee accessibility design in Rocksmith Plus. So in the next 15 minutes, I'll try to cover the design choices we made in order to match the existing Rocksmith experience to a wider, wider spectrum of player needs. So what is Rocksmith? Well, at its heart, it's interactive music learning software. The first Rocksmith launched in 2011, when games using plastic instruments ruled the sales charts. The assumption was gamers were already spending hundreds of hours learning to play almost guitar. Maybe they could translate their skills to a real guitar. So Rocksmith was aimed mainly at these kinds of core gamers. In the, the main career mode, focused on earning points, unlocking gear, and performing at progressively bigger venues. But we discovered two things when Rocksmith shipped. First, um, it was picked up by more than just plastic instrument enthusiasts. This is Audrey, who learned to play guitar using Rocksmith. Not gonna lie, she's not our assumed primary audience here. Um, the second thing is we, we kind of embrace the distinction that Rocksmith isn't learning disguised as a game. It's more of a learning platform that uses gameplay to help people learn songs, and that's what people really focused on. Uh, so 2014 had a really successful run, and it paved the way for the evolution of the series. In 2022, Rocksmith Plus. Uh, so we just released on PC, and we have some pretty ambitious goals. Uh, we're trying to build a subscription-based live service offering thousands of songs, um, and also expanding our genre variety, and ultimately, we're trying to welcome in even more types of players into our community. And obviously improving accessibility is a big part of that goal. So now I think it's pretty clear Rocksmith is not a typical Ubisoft game. Um, for one, our controller is a fully functional musical instrument. So while Ubisoft has made notable strides in fostering accessibility in their flagship games, we couldn't exactly follow that same path here. So here's where we started. So we have the same camera and control as in previous games. Our UI shows a 3D version of the guitar that you're holding in real life, as if you're kind of looking through the back of it on this note way where the notes travel down and you press on the frets that the notes land on. And you pluck the right string at the right time to play the notes, simple. Not so much, because when you consider a guitar has six strings and anywhere from 12 to 20-ish accessible frets, depending on the type of guitar, then you factor in all the possible combinations and techniques and chords, and the number of inputs goes beyond realistic comprehension. So what we're really asking players to do mechanically is to process a lot of audiovisual information at the full speed of the song, and then simultaneously map that information from the screen to the physical instrument they're playing, and then remember that stuff over time. So even though our system can add and remove notes based on player accuracy in real time, which is super powerful, um, there's still the potential for cognitive overload, even with experienced musicians. We can watch this example. Okay. Well, that's pretty common for a first playthrough. So you know, we took a step back and we looked at our gameplay from the lens of inclusive design. Uh, this methodology is well known in design circles and there's some awesome reading available that I encourage game devs to reference if you haven't already, like this uh, toolkit from Microsoft Design. Uh, but for us, inclusive design meant looking at our game mechanics as experienced by players across various ranges of contexts. We considered who might be playing our game and, and brainstormed what unintentional challenges they might face depending on their background and experience. And this also included the classic set of 
accessibility categories like vision, hearing, mobility, and cognition. And also we, we acknowledged, you know, we're not gonna be 100% barrier free because we have less control over the accessibility of the instrument itself. So here's what we did. Our game loop starts when you pick a song to play. And in this example from Rocksmith 2014, there really wasn't much to do aside from pick an arrangement to play and then go. But arrangements drastically change the experience you'll have. So it's a pretty significant choice. So I might like playing a lead arrangement for a variety of reasons. You know, maybe I play best when fretting one note at a time and less like on, on chords with involving multiple strings that you have to hold down on the fretboard for long periods of time. So for Rocksmith Plus, we made song selection much more deliberate. Uh, now you have the option to investigate what each arrangement entails more closely. And I'll get into some specifics on that in a second. Um, but first, the, the other major aspect from previous Rocksmiths um, that we looked at was this emphasis, emphasis that was placed on mastery percentage, which is that number. Um, it basically equates to how proficient you were in playing the song. And the 100% meant you basically mastered the song. But because this number was so prominent, and it was kind of the only point of data to really go on, some players found themselves sucked into a number chasing quest to keep increasing that number and get that 100%. But in reality, improving your mastery on each successive playthrough is unrealistic. Progress doesn't really work that way. But when a game is treating mastery as the only metric that matters and you can't reach it, that's not gonna feel very good. Uh, so we try to help people make more informed choices and make goal formation more flexible. Uh, so instead of mastery, we prominently emphasize the difficulty target, which is a new metric. Um, and by default, it's automatically set to give a reasonable challenge based on previous playthroughs. But we also allow the player to adjust that target however they like. And so that difficulty target slider is tied into every skill in the game. So once the player chooses an arrangement, we can show them what kinds of skills or chords will appear at each difficulty or increment. And so this allows for a more flexible type of goal formation beyond, beyond just go for 100% every time. So now I can set intermediate goals along my way, or I can compare the same arrangement at 90% and 100% and decide that, you know what, 90% is most of the song anyway, and I can learn those extra flourishes that would get me to 100% later, or, or maybe never because that's just not what my learning goal is and I'm fine playing it at 90%. Um, we also expose more numbers at the end of a playthrough. So now you can see what goes into that mastery number. And we find that accuracy at the current difficulty percentage is a much better way to contextualize your results. So in this case, even though my mastery is overall low, the 72% accuracy is actually a pretty solid outcome uh, based on the difficulty target that was set. Uh, and this matters because it sends an important message to players that you know there's more than one way to have a successful outcome in this game. So the next thing we looked at was our specialized visual language, which was also introducing some unintentional challenge. So for instance, the ability to somehow decode by sight reading that a X symbol on a note somehow means a palm mute technique isn't really something we wanna challenge players on because this knowledge takes front loading and reinforcement over time, we really want to challenge them on the ability to perform a palm mute at the right time when they actually know what that means. So we added the ability to see what each skill looks like on the note way and then how they're executed before you even play. And for chords, players can hear what the chords sound like and then test them out and actually get feedback in a kind of a no pressure context so in this example, when it turns green, that's because it heard the correct chord and it's validating what the player did. So when it comes to playing the song, there are two variables that we can't really help players prepare for, no way density and song speed. Because players' thresholds for handling notes at full speed can vary dramatically at any given time. So one of the most appreciated features in previous Rocksmiths is riff repeater. This gives the ability to stop the song at any point isolate a specific passage, then adjust the speed and the amount of notes and practice it over and over again. So in many ways, riff repeater is the heart of the game because it's where the player has the most agency. To 
use a surfing metaphor, Riff Repeater is like stopping the wave and reshaping it into the best challenge for your surfboard and ability, rewinding the wave over and over again until you can ride it perfectly. Another thing we added to Riff Repeater is the ability to play the song literally one note at a time. So here, each note sits on the string until it's played correctly. If I'm off by a little bit, the game can detect this and provide hints to help me find the right position. So this takes speed out of the cognitive load equation completely, and it lets you focus only on positioning. There's no reason why you couldn't play the entire song this way and gradually build up your speed before you then shift over to more rhythmic play and build up those skills. So we really wanted to get people into Riff Repeater as soon as possible, rather than toss them into a deep settings menu on the first session. So we broke out the most commonly used settings into practice presets that are much easier to kind of jump into and play. And one of those presets includes the note by note setting. There's something else we realized. The 3D note way itself may not always be the best fit for every player in every situation, because judging distance can be tricky from that perspective. RS tab is an option we added that brings up a secondary two-dimensional UI, because we found that some players find this view more natural from those who have experience with guitar notation to those who rely less on color coding and more on string position to differentiate strings and notes. And lastly, my personal favorite, MIDI playback. So there can be a lot of situations where playing along to the master recording can actually present an unintentional challenge. What if there are two guitars playing at the same time? How am I supposed to pick out which guitar part I'm playing from the rest of the band? Well, MIDI playback is a feature that removes the master recording and it plays a synthesized version of only what the player is supposed to play at that difficulty level. Uh, this is available on demand for every song in the game. So here's an example of Ride of Valkyries in multi-track with two guitars playing the complete song. And now here's MIDI playback playing only the notes for my instrument at the current difficulty setting. So here we have an accessibility benefit and an educational benefit all in one. I think that's really cool. So on a final note, you may notice, have noticed that you know, none of these features are available from a dedicated accessibility menu. That's because we don't have one, because we found it impossible to draw the line between the standard and accessibility settings, because it all basically comes down to some form of customization over another. So you know, our approach is just put the settings where they're most likely to be used. And that brings us up to the present. So now that Rocksmith Plus has released, you know, the real work can kind of start because we're a live service and we're listening to see how our design choices are actually landing with players. And then we're going to start making adjustments as needed. Uh, so I hope this talk was useful for anyone tasked with making an established franchise more accessible. For those of you undergoing an overhaul of your own games, here's a summary of what I discussed. Before you design a dedicated mode for a specific set of players, it could be useful to first look at your core loop, list out your game mechanics and gameplay variables, uh, then brainstorm all the possible unintentional challenges you can find using inclusive design exercises. Uh, then you know, think about what you already have that could be made more useful just with the right point of access or a context shift. And when you do actually add new features, do so holistically. Because I think you'll find it's more efficient to develop this way, and you just might be helping more people than you even anticipated. So thanks for listening. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to the GA conference staff and our Rocksmith community for being awesome. Have a great rest of the conference.